Hi there everyone, I'm Melissa Alsler. I'm here with Jeff Reeves, the lead writer and editor of InvestorPlace.com. Today we're going to talk a little bit about dividends. So Jeff, dividends are all the rage these days. Can you tell us a little bit just about why and some of the challenges of investing in income stocks? Yeah, um, everybody likes dividends because it's kind of like a guaranteed return on your investment, presuming that the dividends don't go down at all. That if your company pays you every quarter, it's money that you get simply by virtue of investing in the stock. So it's a good way to kind of supercharge your returns. If the stock is going up, if the stock just goes sideways, it's a way for you to get paid, even if the market's kind of choppy. So dividends are a good kind of low risk way um, to kind of fuel your portfolio. And also older people, uh, they do kind of like the income potential that comes from it. Uh, some people call it the paycheck. Every quarter you get a check from the companies that you invest in, and it's, it can be something that you can live on if you need to. So I feel like everyone loves to buy dividend stocks, but what about knowing when to actually sell one? Yeah, um, I, there, there are five things that I look for um, if I'm kind of on the fence on a dividend stock. Number one, obviously, is what's going on with that dividend. Is it being sustained or is it being cut or reduced or altogether eliminated? Um, if the dividend is going down, that's, that's typically a very bad sign. Companies do not like to touch those things, especially if they have a long history of dividends that they're going to break. So uh, if the dividend is actually moving down or being altogether eliminated, obviously, it's not worth it anymore. Now, what about companies who pay a dividend, but it's maybe just a penny a quarter or something small like that? Yeah, that's kind of a trick of Wall Street. There's, there's a nominal dividend payer group where they pay a penny a quarter or two pennies a quarter just so they can be classified as dividend stocks. So if a mutual fund is out there and it has to invest in companies that pay a dividend, they're going to invest in these companies, not because the dividend is robust, but just because it's one of their metrics they have to hit. So you have a much more flexible criteria that you can apply to your portfolio. So I would look for a bigger dividend than that. Now, what about something happens like a lot of investors piled into Kraft, for example, and then it spun off its grocery business? What would you do in that situation? Yeah, a lot of these big companies that are stable, uh, that pay a nice dividend, sometimes when they spin off, you have to be, be careful there because the, the parts do not necessarily equal what the whole did before. So Kraft is a good example of that. They have a domestic grocery business in America where they do their mac and cheese, very stable, good dividend payer. But as they spun off their international business, I believe it's called Mondelez, I can't pronounce that thing, but... <laughs> Um, you should be careful because they are now two very different companies. So if one doesn't fit with your portfolio or one doesn't pay as big of a dividend, it, it's not a bad thing to move your money. So if there is a spinoff or a change to the structure of the stock, um, you should use that as an opportunity to reassess. Now, kind of being a little bit more obvious, I would think if you're in a dividend stock, it's paying a nice yield, but its stock is plummeting, you'd probably still want to get out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, dividends, they, they only go so far. So if your stock is losing a lot of value, if it's down 50% since you bought it, or even 25% since when you bought it, uh, you have to realize that dividends typically are only three, four, maybe 5% a year you're gonna get. So it's gonna take a very, very long time for you to recoup your losses on the dividends alone. So if you can find a stock that's gonna be stable and pays a good dividend, you should move your money to something else rather than hope that these companies that have flopped are ever gonna come back. Anything else you keep an eye on when trying to sell a dividend stock? Yeah, this is, takes a little bit more math, but it's called yield on cost. So you have to remember that the, the dividend yield that you see in Yahoo Finance is not necessarily the yield that the company has for you. So the yield is based on current pricing and current dividend, but if you bought it 10 years ago to discounted price, then your yield could be much higher. So I always look at yield on cost because it's a, it shows you what dividends have done over time. If you bought a company with a 3% yield and that 3% yield hasn't changed over time, that means it really hasn't increased its dividend very much or it's only increased as much as the share price. So I think it's very important to look at your yield on cost because if you buy a stock that continuously increases its dividend, your yield on cost may be five, six, seven, eight percent because you bought at a set price and the dividends continue to move up. And that's a very powerful way to turn a regular investment over time into a huge dividend payer. Makes sense. Well, thanks for chatting with us today. And if you want to learn more about dividends, go to InvestorPlace.com.